throwing things around. All right. Oh, uh, welcome to worship. Yes. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Hi, internet. Yes. <laughs> Um, it, uh, our camera is backwards. It, uh, instead of what you would think green light means go, uh -huh. but no, red light means it's on. <laughs> so, be warned, if the red light is on, that means that you are being broadcast all over the world. And it is now over here. Camera. Uh, sound, so. In living color. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> anyway, right. So, good morning. God bless you all. Welcome to worship. Uh, a couple of announcements before we begin to worship together. I want to remind you that next Sunday, even though it's 90 degrees and humid enough that you get uh, wet walking from your car to the church, even though that, next Sunday is Christmas. So Christmas in July, next week, uh, we'll be celebrating and giving thanks to God and hearing the good news of Jesus Christ born to us. Um, and the blessing of hearing that uh, this uh, this story and remembering uh, all that God has done for us in the birth of Jesus Christ in the middle of the summer is that it helps us hear it in a different kind of way, a way that's uh, not connected maybe with Santa Claus and all the other stuff, but helps us uh, hear it specifically um, about what God has chosen to do uh, for each of us. And so we'll be doing that next week and we'll be uh, gathering together uh, all the way through the end of July, a Christmas gift for those in need in uh, our community. We are gathering supplies for the Streets of Hope homeless shelter. And the nice thing about what we're collecting is that it is, um, it is the stuff of life that we need to survive, but is maybe less glamorous. Stuff like trash bags and toilet paper, things that are needed to run the shelter that maybe not everybody thinks to give. And so what a blessing to gather this stuff together and be able to uh, give that to the shelter as they get ready to start their new season in, uh, in the fall. And so that list of their wish list is in your uh, bulletin on your announcement sheet. And I invite you uh, to pick something up uh, if you are able this week and to bring it in next week as we uh, celebrate Christmas in July. Uh, coming up a week from Tuesday, uh, we are heading over to Friendly's Restaurant at any time between 5 and 8. We'll be having a fun dinner together and it is a fundraiser also, so 10% of your uh, the cost of your meal comes back here to the church. Uh, so make sure you're putting that on your calendar and also uh, getting the flyer uh, that is on the table in the entryway. And speaking of flyers in the entryway, there are flyers about our flea market, which is August 5th. Uh, August 5th, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. There are still spots available if you want a spot to set up uh, and sell the things that you have. Um, a spot by itself is $10, uh, with a table is $15. Um, and like I said, still lots of spots available. Yes. Um, you can reserve your spot with email or phone or calling Laura, or um, you can see me after church and I'll get it to the office too. Okay. So um, those are ways to make sure that that, uh, that that happens, that your spot is reserved. Please reserve your spot as soon as possible. That helps us uh, with the organizing end of it. And then a request to everyone who is on social media of some sort. Um, the church has an event for this, uh, for the flea market. Um, when we post it, if you can share it, it really does make a big difference. It not only shares that news with all the people who you are connected with, but uh, within the Facebook algorithm or whatever algorithm, it helps uh, it to tell that uh, calculation to pop it up in people's feeds more and more. So it really is just like two clicks to share it and it makes a big difference. So thank you if you're able to do that. Uh, so all of those things um, and even more on your announcement sheet. Uh, but those are the things I especially wanted to draw your attention to today. And so uh, with all of that, let's take a moment and hear the music of the prelude, prepare our hearts and minds to meet Jesus in this place. Thank you. 
you are able. And if you would remind me, er, remind me, if you would join me in remembering this memory verse this morning, <laughs> which apparently I can't even speak very well right now, but we'll do this together. And uh, in sh saying this verse, also saying it as a prayer. And so let us uh, uh, do the memory verse together. He must become greater, I must become less. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned. We, we have, have hurt, hurt our community. We have hurt those we love. We, we have hurt those we do not know. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. We have fallen short of who you call us to be, and have not trusted your timing or your will. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Amen. God's mercy falls on us freely. Undeserved, our sin is met with forgiveness. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Today, you receive the gifts of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By your Holy Spirit, help us receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. <laughs> and as you find your seats, I'm going to invite our youngest children of God to join me if they would like for a special message. Come on up. You guys are going to be our example, but we're going to get everybody involved in this right now, right? Okay. So, what did God make? What in what all what what did what are some things God made? You know? Us. 
Us. High five. Yes. <laughs> what else? What did God do? What? Wild guess. What? Church? Yeah. Absolutely. What else? What about flowers? Yes. Flowers. Got me flowers. Charlie. Yeah, Charlie. careful of leaning on that. You might Don't take me. Yep. You're good. <laughs> You're good. You're good. What else? Yeah. What? Food. Yes. What about trees? Yes. Yes. What about mountains? Yes. Yes. <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything in the world God made. And even yes. in the Bible, Christmas. <laughs> we celebrate some of this. God made all that there is, and the Bible talks about all the things that God made getting to get in on praising God and rejoicing. So I wondered if you could show me, if you were going to use your body to be a mountain, well, how might you do that? What about you guys? How would you make a mountain with your body? Oh, I see some good ideas. You see some ideas? Mountains. Can you make a mountain like that with your body? Make a mountain. Okay. Now, wait. I'm going to read the this part from the Bible, okay. and we're going to have the mountains do what it says. So get ready. I want to see all the mountains. Ready? It says, For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills shall burst forth in song. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine if the... Wow, it would yes. just stop right now. Yeah? Yeah? Amazing that the things that God made can, made can even get in on the praise. And even more, show me with your body, how might you make a tree? Yeah, that's a good way to be a tree. How might you be a tree? Oh, you got to stand up to be an... Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to be a weeping willow. Sorry, I had a tree. Yeah, okay. Okay, be your trees. I want to see all the trees, 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 trees. Okay, and it says the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Woo! Isn't that amazing? Even the creation that God made gets in on praising God, and so do we. And so um, I'm going to invite you to do something that's going to feel maybe a little weird. And a little bit here, Miss Janice is going to read us that lesson. Feel free to be a mountain, and be a tree, burst forth in song, and clap your hands. We use in this place our bodies in all sorts of ways to give praise to the God who made us. For now, let's bow our heads and say thank you to God. Dear God, Dear God, God. thank you. Thank you. For the mountains, for the mountains and, the trees, and the trees and all that you have made. And all that you have made. With them, With them we, shout thanks. we shout thanks. 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 Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, guys. Oh, oh, Go ahead and sit from Isaiah 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, 
giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. I shall not return to me, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, <laughs> and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So that just so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of the sin, the Spirit is the life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 13th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, but the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. And this is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. And yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears, hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. 
But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, and who indeed bears fruit, and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. And will you please bow your heads with me and let us pray. Lord, let our hearts be good soil. Prepare us as we receive your word this day. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. So in my lifetime, first in magazines and now on the internet, I have always fallen uh, to that little temptation of the online or the magazine quiz. You know this? But where you do like 20 multiple choice questions and at the end of it, it's gonna tell you what season you are. I am an autumn. Or which golden girl you are. Or which Muppet you are. Or which Harry Potter house you would be assigned to, right? And usually, when I do them, there is I have an idea of what it's going to say at the end. In fact, I might even have a preference for what it should say at the end. I'm trying to slant my answers uh, to try to make my, what I want to come, or at least I have an answer I don't want. Like, imagine my relief when it turns out I am a Rolf the dog and not Miss Piggy, <sighs> or. I'm still kind of bummed that it turns out I'm Hufflepuff. <laughs> Today's gospel lesson is a story. Jesus is telling a story, a parable, a story that is teaching at the same time. And he taught it on this day where the crowd gathered. It was a sunny day and it was an intense time in the ministry. The 12th chapter of Matthew tells us that the opposition to Jesus' teaching has been heating up, that the Pharisees are debating him openly and that they're plotting his death and they are saying he is in league with Beelzebub. And yet the crowd gathered. And so many people had come that Jesus actually has to hop onto a little boat and go offshore a bit so that he can talk to all the people who are there on the beach. And from that little boat, he says, listen, a sower went out to sow. And it's tempting for me to hear this parable like one of those online quizzes. Like there's a way that I can do the math properly and answer the right questions to turn out uh, what kind of soil I am and that I'll be the one I want. And which one do I want to be? Good the good soil, right? This one's not, it's not like, Oh, all of it would be okay. No, this parable is very clear who I want to be, right? I want to be the good soil, and you do too, I hear. We want to be the good soil. But when we start hearing more of the stories and answering the multiple choice questions and look around the world and our pattern of life in it, well, I start worrying when I do the math and add up my score, things aren't going to go the way I want them to. Question one. I feel hopeful most of the time, some of the time, none of the time. Well, I know my hope's supposed to be in Jesus Christ, but sometimes I watch the news and I look at my Facebook feed and I get discouraged with the way that people behave and the way that our world is so quick to anger and the fear of how people will behave and what might go on uh, takes such root in me that sometimes it guides my actions more than the hope that should be within me. And I know my fear and cynicism can eat up seeds of hope on the path as quickly as birds eat seed. Question two. I can name five or more people I'm mad at or three people I'm mad at or I'm not mad at anyone, or I don't like people. <laughs> I remember the days that I am so full of grief or resentment, or my heart gets hard with someone, 
times that I've seen a name on a color ID inside. I remember the times that I can feel hurt or hard or bitter and then act in ways that hurt others or trip other people. And I know that seeds of faith don't grow well in stones. Question three. I spend four hours a day looking at a screen, two hours a day looking at a screen. What, I'm sorry, I was looking at my phone and I missed your question. <laughs> yeah, I remember the way I feel that I never have enough time for the things that matter. But my phone actually tells me how much time I spend uh, sort of playing around. Um, and I remember how many times I want to take the easy way uh, for relationships or when it comes to God. Maybe it's just enough, God, to show up at church and just say a prayer. I want to dig deep into who I am with you or look too closely at my sin. I worry about that shallowness because I know what it reveals when I uh, focus on just things of this world instead of the depth that God calls me to. That when the heat of the trouble beats down, whatever God has managed to grow in me can melt away. Question four. When I make whoa. Oh no. I sure did. Okay, so that's what it is. Pretend you don't know yet. <laughs> when I make a decision, I think about how it will affect people around me and generations to come, how it will affect my family and friends, if it makes me better than others, or whatever I want. I remember that sometimes even though I know uh, who I'm called to be, that I judge others. And I remember the times those pointed edges of self-righteousness uh, get in my way. I remember the vines that say it's all about me and money is security and power and that other people can take care of all the poor in the future, but I gotta focus on getting mine now. And I, I remember the times in my life that those vines, those thorny vines have grown up and choked uh, what uh, God was growing in me. And I know those are a problem too. And then there's always, for some reason, a question on the surveys that is about what your favorite color is, but I, didn't put that I don't really know why that's always on there or what it has to do with anything. But I do know that when I try to do the math and calculate my own righteousness before God and try to uh, angle it so that I can prove that I am the good soil and that God can plant in me that I fall short. And so let's throw down our pets and let's stop keeping score and instead pray for what we can't do on our own no matter how hard we try. Lord, let my heart be good soil. Lord, let my heart be good soil. And God is so good and answers prayer. God works with us and works in us to prepare our hearts to receive the word that God has for us. And we get this parallel right there in nature. How do you make good fertile soil? Well, it starts with nourishment. And God then feeds us with bread and wine and the word. And God does the same thing that happens in nature, this fearsome grace that out of the crap, God manages to nourish us too. Even in the worst of our life, God takes the manure and makes of us a richer soil. And soil needs rest. And so God gives us a Sabbath day, a fallow time to rest and to get stronger. The truth is when it's only up to us, the math of our life never ends up to a calculated victory where we are the perfect Christians, the perfect soil, God's gold star disciples. And so God is at work with who we actually are right now in us today, getting us ready to receive the seeds the sower plants and to grow the fruit that changes and blesses our world. And that's not even the only good news in this parable. 
Because even with the truth that our hearts aren't always good soil, well, then we look to the sower. And the absolute, incredible stupidity of the sower. The sower who doesn't do any kind of math before he starts scattering the seed. It's a miracle that any of this seed grew at all with this reckless throwing it everywhere thing that the sower does. What farmer could make a go of it if they took their seed and threw some in Heritage Park and others in the middle of Cayman Yards and more in the river? Well, the sower's lucky that 25% grew as willy-nilly as he is in the planting. A smart farmer would not so so generously or so recklessly see it as expensive, it's precious, shouldn't be thrown around casually, unless the farmer, the sower knows something we don't. Knows that there is no end to the seed and cares more about the hope of growth than the fear of wasting. And what a shocker that this reckless sowing, this abundant, joyful, uh, passionate sowing is blessed beyond anyone's wildest dreams. You know, a former farmer would normally call it a good day if the crop yielded twofold. Fivefold, you call the, the whole town for a celebration. But this farmer, while only 25% grow, but oh, that growth. A harvest of 30, 60, 100 fold. And that's what our God is doing with us, Jesus says. Jesus says that each one of us, our church, this community, and the world, that God looks at us and sees what is worth investing in, worth throwing seed at over and over again, worth trying again with, worth love and grace and mercy and renewed covenants and pain and the cross, even when 75% of the time it might amount to nothing. God keeps on trying with us, fully aware of the worst of us and recklessly, abundantly and extravagantly and passionately and with more love than I have words to tell you of is investing in the best of us. May the seed of God's word take root in us. May it bloom that we would share it with the world 30 times, 60 times, 100 times. Amen. 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 Please stand with me and let's sing. abundant mercy, let us offer prayers for a world in need. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness 
and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain your creation, O God, by instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Maintain peace among all people, O God. Raise up advocates to speak for the downtrodden, politicians to work for the behalf of the, the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal those who are sick, O God, especially those we name before you now, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Stephen, Eugene, Michael, and Eric. Guide healthcare workers to get care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life saving re research. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany visitors to this congregation. Nurture our faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God. Examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation. Multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Oh, okay. Well, the mountains and hills may burst forth in song, but they got nothing on Alberta. <laughs> Will you please stand as you're able with me? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our responsibility and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Okay. Okay. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As we celebrate this meal today, you are welcome at the Lord's table by Christ's invitation. And so you'll come forward at, uh, as Walt invites you and dismisses you from your seats. Uh, you'll come up the left aisle, receive the bread in your open hand, uh, having received the bread, you'll proceed to the tray, choose either red wine or white grape juice, and so receive the gifts of God. The empty cup can be placed in the basket here on your right as you return to your seats uh, through the right aisle. All people are called to Christ's table. Come and taste and see. Amen. Amen.
So just so you know what that little um, move was all about, um, <laughs> our dear Ryan, in perfect Ryan fashion, uh, booked a plane that leaves at 1.50. And so he packed between services, and that's where he just went. And we're uh, blessed that, um, that this congregation is full of musical talent and that uh, Kevin is here and able to um, uh, receive the tag. <laughs> Get tagged. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity in all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand as you are able and receive God's blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.